defenestration is a regular public spectacle in the NHS. Some chairs, chief executives, and finance directors are pushed, while others jump before health department assassins arrive to blame them for debts caused by government underfunding. However, the resignation of Bob Kerslake as chair of King's College Hospital, London, is in a class of its own. The trust is in deep debt, like so many others, partly as a result of rescuing a failed hospital whose true debts were never revealed. But despite making unprecedented savings, King's was yesterday put into punitive financial special measures. Indignation at Kerslake's departure ricochets round the NHS. Chris Ham, head of the King's Fund think tank, told me, this is yet another example of the growing top-down bullying culture. He says when someone of Kerslake's repute feels he has to resign, it sends a message about the near-impossible task. How do they think they can find anyone to replace someone of his stature? That is the insanity of the present regime of rule by targets and terror. NHS managers and chairs are, by and large, among the cleverest and most astute in the public sector, but there isn't an unlimited supply of able people willing to be bullied and blamed for the harshest spending the NHS has ever endured. Ham is right about Kerslake, where do you find anyone with such experience? A maths graduate, he is by training a forensic accountant, was chief executive of Sheffield Council, permanent secretary of the Department for Communities and Local Government, and then David Cameron's head of the civil service. At the hospital trust he is highly respected and well-liked, and his departure leaves staff not only angry, but bereft. His deputy, Sue Slipman, talks of how he gained everyone's trust. He's super bright, very open, and made heroic savings. The worry is that special measures means sending in inferior management consultants, who are described by one King's manager as pimply 12-year-olds, overconfident, overpaid and knowing nothing. Christopher Smallwood, the former chair of St. George's Hospital, London, was also defenestrated for unavoidable debt. He echoes what Kerslake says, people are working extraordinarily hard in impossible circumstances. The fault lies with NHS regulators who send out their bully boys to beat up dedicated managements, so politicians can deny the damage their neglect is doing. NHS Improvement, NHSI, is another expensive remnant of the disastrous Lansley-Cameron Health and Social Care Act. Once called Monitor, it was originally devised to force competitive private sector contracting on the NHS. Its recently departed head, Jim McKee, tells the Health Services Journal that Pound 1BN could be saved by rolling it into NHS England, along with the regulators, abolishing wasteful multitudes of commissioners. NHSI is now Jeremy Hunt's financial enforcer, demanding executives sign up to impossible control totals to satisfy the Treasury. Kerslake told them the sums were undoable, but they'd have fired me if I hadn't signed. Now they blame him for missing fantasy targets.